Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we are going after one of my favorite species in the world to catch, and that is the crappie. And we are rolling out in my 15 foot John boat again, AKA the crispy collector. But today we're gonna to be focusing on fishing bridges. Now you're almost guaranteed to run into some sort of fish on a bridge at all times of the year, but there's two seasons that it really performs well, and that is winter and summer. The reason being those two times of year, fish typically like access to deep water, and usually a bridge is going over some sort of river channel. So little tip, if you're gonna go fish bridges in the winter and summer, try to locate those parts of the bridge that are closest to the river channel, start there and look for bait. Now some bridges can be gigantic and it can be a challenge to find these fish. Today, we're gonna to be using our new electronics and I'm excited to tr finally try out the live scope on the Crispy Collector. And I'm gonna give you guys a little peek on a new bait today, which is the Tasty Tube. It's not quite out yet, but this is an excellent wintertime bait because it doesn't have much appendage movement. Tubes are excellent fish catchers, everyone knows that, but this bait right here is awesome because it doesn't move very much, just a little bit of tentacle movement. And if you guys are gonna get into crappie fishing for the first time, need some baits, or you're just wanting a sweet deal, guggensquad.com, the crappie crusher bundle right now is on sale, it's linked down below. But today we don't want much action because the water is in the 40s, these fish are cold, we're trying to match the movement of these bait fish, and that is key when you're fishing bridges. Make sure to find some bait, you're gonna find some fish. Let's get under these loud, crazy bridges. I'm apologizing right now for the bridge noise, but the fish are under there, I promise you. It just gave the, the old little 30, little dirty 30 mark her first gear loop change yesterday. So I wanted to get out of the water, make sure everything's running smoothly. It seems to be so far. And also a new dish. Check this out. Stuff figure, you know, it's the crispy. We're, we're out here catching things to eat and whatnot. Went ahead and just put ourselves a big old foam measuring board in here. All the way out to 32 inches. I don't think we're gonna be using the full extent of our measuring board today. So we're going after crappie. Okay, so I've gone across just a couple of rows of piling so far. And I found one spot that looks okay. So what I'm gonna do is take some paracord. I'm just gonna kind of take the boat around, and try to wrap myself around one of these posts. Okay. You're set in motion. this I got to turn on my black box just press that button right there rub it for good luck there she blows there we go and yeah, we got some fish down there this is kind of a special one because I tied this little fly myself but I've basically got a uh, eighth ounce Guggen Squad jig head with the spinner on it. This is a spinner version. I took the spinner off and I'm just using the swivel to basically create a little fly that goes right underneath it. We're hooked up. 
I don't know which bait that the fish got, but we got one. Oh, we got the fly. Oh, it's a drum. The drum ate the fly. Four pound test. Well, at least I know something will eat it. Thump. Oh, it's a white bass. Crappie bass ate the tube. Tasty tube. Let go of it, buddy. All right, second fish is a white bass. Hooked up. There's our crop. Sir. Get in here. That one wanted a tasty tube. So what was interesting about that one is, uh, you know, I caught those other two fish in the front and the first cast I made on the backside is where we got the crappie, where that current it's kind of flowing through. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what kind of measurements we got. It's going to be a 13 incher. That is a Dondi. Make sure to put him on the stringer so he doesn't tell his other buddies about it. Oh man, he's still fighting. Feisty. Now, quick rigging tip if you guys want to try the double rig like I'm fishing here. You don't have to fish a fly. You can do two jigs. You can try different colors on each uh, jig head so you can see what the fish like more. It's also a way to cover a little bit more water. You can take your underspin rig. Uh, ours comes with a nice barrel swivel under here. You can take that split ring off of there and your little willow blade and replace it with a leader and then tie your jig head below that and then you're fishing two baits at once. Little caveat to that, you may not get the best fall like you would on a single 16th ounce jig head, but you are able to cover more water and maybe even double up. Oh, got it. Right under that piling. Hey, that's a crappy. Good one. That was pretty sweet, y'all. Watched it go down. Another one about 12. White crappie. Collecting in the crispy. Be 
do the same thing. interest but they're not connecting so I'm going to try to switch up colors maybe switch up baits I'm going to go with natural natural dark the lakes. Just barely gonna do it. Alright, we got our four. I'm gonna settle for five. That's what I'm gonna try to go for. If you guys have never crappie fished before, crappie are pretty unique in that they'll typically stay in an area and they, they won't move off a piece of cover. They love to stick around cover. And looking at them on the electronics, they're one of the few fish that I've watched that will that will back up as well. And sometimes that's a good thing. If they see your bait coming, they'll kind of back up and get in position. And they're very curious. They're like cats. Similar to bass, but bass are more aggressive with their approach. Whereas crappie will very slowly start to turn and they'll nose your bait. Now, live scope, you can actually see their fins moving and they'll they'll start to get kind of excited. And that's when you know you got a good chance of catching that fish. But sometimes they just sit there and they do not move at all and you cannot get them to bite. So sometimes it's just experimenting. You know, that's one of the cool things about it. You can stay on some fish and you can keep experimenting until you catch them where it's bass, you know, most of the time, you get a couple shots and then they're they're gone. Like they're gonna move on to the next piece of cover, move on somewhere. Crappie will a lot of times come back or not go very far at all. This is the cross member. And you see these fish are sitting up under there. And that's very hard to get to. So the best way that I have found to get onto these fish, there's two ways. I can cast across it and let my line go over it, straight dangle, or I can move my boat up a ways and I can cast back and basically parallel it. Both are difficult because you need to get within inches of these fish. You can't just have it off you know, a foot, a foot off, they're not going to eat it. So it's difficult, but that is where the crappie are sitting. 
and a lot of white bass as well. But you see these, they're just individuals and they're chill. They're just chilling there. They're not moving. That's the typical telltale sign of crappie. Look, there's a couple more over here. Oh, this one sees it. Come on, baby. Oh, got him. You better be a crappie. You better be. I'm going to lose my cool. Oh, gosh. acted like a crappie the whole entire time but that one right there guys that, that one's that one's not going to cut the biscuits exact same place I caught white bass where I've been catching these other crappie but god they're difficult you gotta absolutely nail them in the schnoz dead stick it don't move it. Don't you dare sneeze. Oh, we got one coming. Got one coming. Come on, baby. This crappie came from a long ways. Don't back out. Don't, don't back out on me now. Don't you back out on me now. Oh my god, it's primed. Primed. Got him. Oh, you gotta be fiddle farting my floozies. What in the absolute chod nuggets was that? They're so hard to get to because they're underneath structure I can't do a vertical presentation on. Essentially have to. This is how I had a big one a second ago. I lost them. Threw it over. And just dangled it, but I lost him because I was over the cover and he got hung on it. set up a 16th ounce jig drifting into the perfect spot and then dead stick it and then I miss them oh buggers there we go I got one but honestly this feels like a white bass and it is what in the deuce man oh. I think these are just lone females that are just hanging with crappie. I don't know. What are you doing by yourself? You're supposed to be in a big herd. Fish. Guys, my SD card just filled up, but I just dropped it a base of a pillar all the way down there. And Nadine come up and popped it. And I was thinking, oh man, it's gonna be another white bass. No. Big girl, big girl right there. That is number five. That is completing the stringer. We've been working hard out here. That's the one I've been looking for right there. Big girls. That is a 14 inch white crappie. Oh God. God, it smells so sweet when you work this hard for them. Always nice to end on a big one. Ended up with a nice little stringer of crappie to feed the family, some fresh golden crispies. Go out and do it again.
Hope you guys gathered something on fishing under bridges today. Uh, you actually don't have to have a, a bass boat to fish under bridges. Uh, in fact, I saw guys fishing out of kayaks. I saw someone fishing out of an inner tube today. So it's, it's pretty easy access to get up under there and there's always fish under bridges. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more fishing and outdoor adventures. And I'll see y'all on the next one.